Hello and welcome to Divi Coaching. Today we're going to be looking at how to host fonts locally on your Divi website. Now we all get used to having a huge range of fonts available and by default in Divi you have the entire Google Fonts library available. Now there have been some issues you may or may not have read about with GDPR and the fact that if you do set up your fonts that way, when a visitor comes to your website they're actually sent off to the Google website to retrieve the fonts if those aren't already installed on their system. Uh, you can get around that by only installing the fonts that your website uses on your own website and then that external link off to Google uh, is removed from the, the, the train of requests that are made when someone comes to your page. So let's have a look at how we can host fonts locally in Divi. If we head over to the dashboard we come down to Divi and Divi options we scroll down a bit, we'll see that Use Google Fonts is enabled by default. And you can see that because if you go into the site and you then come down to the theme customizer, choose general settings and typography, if you come down to where you can choose fonts, you'll find that a huge list of fonts is enabled. And these are all the Google Fonts. Now we don't want those, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the dashboard back to Divi theme options, we're going to come down to use Google Fonts and we're going to click it to disabled. We're then going to scroll down and click on save changes. If we then go back into the site again, back into the customizer and once again have a look under general settings and typography, you'll find we only have a very limited selection of fonts which are the normal system fonts. Uh, I'm going to click publish and we can now look at how we can start adding custom fonts to our Divi installation. First thing we're going to do is choose some fonts and to do that we're going to head over to fonts.google.com um, This has every single font, I think if we look at the list here, yes 1576 different fonts available. And if you want to get a preview of some text you can type or paste something uh, so here we are, if you want to learn all about Divi then you're in the right place and you can see this in every single different font and you can scroll through and you can choose some fonts. If you find the idea of 1500 fonts overwhelming, um, do a little Google search for um, font pairings and there's quite a few sites that will tell you what are trending font pairings or different websites and how they use the different fonts. I would normally choose just two fonts, one for my headings and one for my body text. In my case I'm going to choose uh, Ubuntu so if you want to see what it looks like you can type Ubuntu in the top here uh, and you can find Ubuntu has eight styles. This I'm going to use for my headings and if you come down it'll show you all the different weights that that font is available in. Well weights and styles. Uh, for my body text I'm going to use a font called Lato and again here is Lato and here are all the different weights that are available here. Now there is an option in the top right here to download the font family but we're not going to do that, we're going to download it using a Google Web Fonts Helper which actually makes life easier. So make a note of the two fonts that you're going to use or, or more fonts if you want more. Uh, head over to another site, so this is Google Web Fonts Helper so if you just Google that you'll come up with this site and you can then start looking for your two fonts. So in my case Ubuntu, so I'm going to choose the standard Ubuntu, I don't want condensed or monospaced, so choose that one. Uh, it'll show me all the different weights that are available, all the different character sets, I'm just going to have Latin which is the normal character set. Um, I want this for my headline so I'm going to choose a 700 and a 500, the regular is, is always added by default, so I'm just going to choose those two font weights. And if you scroll down a bit more you'll see that it gives you different options for modern browsers which is WAF2 format or you can go for legacy support which also adds a true type font or historic support which adds a whole load of different extra ones. Honestly I just stick with modern browsers. 98% of browsers uh, or 
98% of site visitors will be able to have a browser that accesses the WAF, WAF2 format fonts. So I'd just stick with that. If you do want older browsers, then you could choose one of the other options, and then you have to individually upload more files later on. Ubuntu 500 and Ubuntu 700. Um, what we're going to do is click ignore all of this text. You don't need to copy it. We're going to come right down to the bottom here to download files. And we're going to click on this link at the bottom to download a zip file of all the fonts. And that is now being downloaded. I'm then going to repeat the exercise with Lato. So I'm going to go over to Lato. Now this is going to be my body copy. So as well as the regular, I'm actually going to go for a 300, which is a slightly lighter weight. And I'm going to go for the 300 italic and the 400 italic or the regular italic as well, just in case I want those in my body copy. Once again, I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to make sure that I have modern browsers selected, which is the WAF2. And I'm going to click to download that folder as well. So I've now downloaded two zipped folders of fonts to my local machine. I then need to go to my downloads folder and we need to unzip these before we try and install them. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to click on extract all. I'm going to extract it to the same path. And the same with Lato, extract all, and I'm going to extract it to the same path. And then when you look inside these folders, you'll find you've got the weights. So you've got the 500 and the 700 and the regular for the Ubuntu. And if we go into the Lato, you'll find you've got the 300 italic and the regular, which is 400 and italic as well. So we now have the fonts which we've downloaded onto our local machine. Now we just need to install them into Divi. So to do that, we go back to our site, we come into the Visual Builder, we choose the settings, we go into Design. Uh, this is a heading, so we go to Heading Text. And if we click on this where it says Default, you can now find we have the option to upload. So if we click on Upload, we can give your font a name. So in this case, we're going to go with Ubuntu. We can choose the font file. We're actually going to choose all the different weights of Ubuntu here and we're going to click on Open. Ah, but there's a problem. By default, WordPress and Divi don't let you upload WAF and WAF2 files. This is because there are some concerns about security, and you do really need to be careful that if you are uploading these fonts, you get them from a reputable source. So don't buy a font on the web. Don't download something from some BitTorrent somewhere. Don't even use a font that you've been given by your customer unless you are absolutely clear where it came from. So you should be loading fonts that you have purchased directly yourself or free fonts like the Google fonts. So as long as you're uploading fonts from um, Google, just like I'm showing you how to do in this tutorial, then you don't have to worry. So what we have to do is we have to actually go in and we have to add some custom PHP to our functions.php file in our child theme. So let me run through how to do that now. So we need to come out of our Visual Builder. We need to come to the dashboard, appearance, and then theme file editor. You get a warning saying, don't make edits to your uh, dashboard unless you know what you're doing, which you do in this case. So we click on understand. Make sure that you have your child theme selected, not Divi. Very important that it's your child theme. You don't want to be editing anything in your main Divi functions.php file. Then if you click on functions.php, have a double check. Divi coaching child theme functions.php. If you don't have the child theme uh, installed, uh, I have a tutorial on this, which also includes a template of how you can install this for free. Once you're in here, you want to go down to the bottom. You want to make sure that you uh, haven't changed anything of the PHP that's there. You want to paste in the PHP, which I've included in the description to this video. So paste in that PHP. Uh, once you've pasted that in, um, all it's really doing is it is adding what's called a MIME type. So in this case, WAF and WAF2. It's adding it and it is then telling um, Divi that those types of font are available. So that's what it's doing. So click on Update File. And once that's completed, you can go back to the site. 
you can enable the visual builder you can go back into your headline design heading text and you're in your h1 this time you can choose upload we're going to use ubuntu so we can again type in ubuntu and we can choose our three ubuntu files click on open and this time they are supported and it will upload the font and you can see it's automatically applied to the headline. We're then going to repeat the exercise with the body text. So we're going to come into the body text, design, text. Again, we're going to choose upload and the font this time we're going to be uploading is Lato. So we come into Lato, choose the font files, back into your downloads folder, choose all of the Lato files and click on open. Click to upload and you'll now find that your body text is in Lato. In order to make it easy if you ever do want to change text I would strongly recommend that instead of choosing a font here that you leave default set. So I've gone back in and set default for that I'm going to come back into my headline and I'm going to set default for the heading as well. And then what you can do, and I think is a really important thing to do every time you are setting up a new site, is you should be going into the customizer, you should be going into general settings and typography, and you should be setting your default theme header font so in my case, I'm going to choose Ubuntu and you can see that changed automatically. And then I'm going to set my default body font to Lato and that also changed that and then click on publish. What that means is if ever in the future I want to change the default fonts throughout my website, I can simply come in here, say I'm not going to, but say I wanted to change it to times. I can just click on times and automatically every header throughout my whole site, as long as it's set to default, is going to change to that new font. So I'm going to set that back to Ubuntu and I'm going to click on publish. And you can see now that the list of fonts that I have to choose from um, is all the, the five or six system fonts that we had before, but that Ubuntu and Lato are now available as uh, fonts for me to choose from throughout the project. So I hope you found this video useful. If so, please do uh, like and subscribe to my channel and leave a comment below. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time.